The views and opinions expressed on Unlock Your Wealth Radio are those of the host, guests, and callers only and are not necessarily the views of Unlock Your Wealth Radio, Heather Wagonhalls, or Success Publishing International. More willpower than a barefoot woman at a shoe sale. Able to stretch a single paycheck for an entire month. Makes money concepts easier than third grade math. Introducing your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagonhalls. Work all day, you stress all night. Take your mind off your money, focus on your life. Money don't matter or the stuff it bought. It's the way you think, not what you've got, yeah. Unlock Your Wealth Radio starts now. Get your money mind right. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm so glad to have you here. Heather Wagonhalls at the helm. And yes, we will help you get your money mind right on today's show with these great features. Our key for this week is take emotion out of the picture. Yes, yes. Because we already know to spend less and save more, don't we? We do and we don't. Correct. Like we do know, but we don't do it. So we're going to learn how to keep our passions in perspective. And uh, I could keep going with the alliteration and prosperity, but I'll spare you. Our money word of the day. What does stationery and assets have to do in common? As in not the paper kind, but not moving. We will talk about that with our moolah word of the day. And minutes on your money today are ways to detect a scam. Also, our trivia question is based on last week's show, Knowledge is Power, Not Knowing is Powerful, if you remember that key. And we talked about um, our five areas of concern. Uh, additionally, we have an awesome guest. Who likes money, lies, secrets, deceit, marriage, all of that great stuff? Uh, well, it certainly makes for good soap operas and for today's guest because we have Christopher Dukes from Dukes Financial coming on today's show and we're going to talk about just that. Uh, we also have our Unlock Your Wealth protege, Lauren Rumpler, back from in the other recording studio. She's now in the studio with us. And as always, we will talk about your money your credit, and how to get ahead in any economy. We will also show you how to manage your money easier, saving time and reducing stress with our proven techniques for you to create unlimited wealth and happiness. How does that sound? That sounds so fabulous. I think so. Um, Because I would always like to have more money than what I have now. Because you know what? Enough is never enough. And I'm sure you probably feel that way. So wouldn't it be great if we could figure out how to get more of enough? Also, uh, Insiders Club members are automatically entered in our weekly giveaway. So if you are not a member and would like to compete for great money management tools, all you have to do is answer today's trivia question. This week's trivia question is, in the five areas of concern we talked about on last week's show, all you have to do is name one of the five. In the five areas of concern, name one of the five. And actually, I'm going to give you a hint to get you started off because it's the easiest one. Anyway, income and expenses. So there's one of your areas of concern. So all you have to do is name one of the other four, and you can win fabulous management tools for you and your family to share with your friends, all of that great stuff. Now, you're saying, okay, but you haven't told us how to win. Well, you can win one of three ways. You can call in, chat in, or email in to win. If you want to call in, that number is 1-866-966-9420. That's 866-966-9420. Or you can email us if you are listening from a podcast. Don't worry because it's not live when you're listening. All you have to do is send us an email to trivia at you ywradio.com. That's trivia at uywradio.com. And if you're listening live, great. Just hop in the chat room. I'm here. Hi, come see me. I want to talk to you and give me your potential right answer. And hopefully you will win fabulous prizes. So, uh, 
Today, we have on our Minutes on Your Money headline, uh, we are going to talk about ways to detect a scam. I've been doing tons of interviews lately on scams, and one of the things is there's some common threads. And so I thought, why wouldn't I share it with my favorite people, uh, with the radio listeners? So here you go. Here's my gift to you. Total bonus, not included. In the price of today's lesson, ways to detect a scam. So you have probably heard about all sorts of scams. Uh, And if not, uh, I have a large sum of money, like $17 trillion, actually, that I'd like to wire you from Nigeria. But all I need you to do is give me um, $672 for the wire fee, and I can make that happen. So how about it? Hey, you up for it? What do you think? Uh, Because people actually do fall for that. But I know because you are a listener of this show regularly, that you wouldn't fall for that one. But what if a scam is a bit more subtle? What do we need to look for? And that's what we're going to talk about right now is what we need to be looking for when it comes to scams because they're not always so obvious and in our inbox. There is this psychological phenomenon, and it's called priming. Okay, marketers know this very well. Repeated exposure to stuff inures you to it. If you think about it, even if you listen to a song that you hate, but you don't have a choice because you're listening to regular radio, it's not your CD, and so they just it happens to be in the rotation, and so you're getting it like twice an hour, and you're listening all day, and all you need after that is because you just wore out your beehive behind uh is totally chapped from the annoyance of listening to this song and you know you go on without your day after uh, throughout the rest of your day and the next day um goes by you don't happen to hear that song because maybe you're not listening to the radio but then somebody says something or talks about it and all of a sudden you've got that stupid song playing in your head again doesn't that make you crazy it totally does me maybe it's just one of my pet peeves but so that is called priming. So like you have heard that song over and over and over, and now just the mere mention of that song sets you off and you have an instant connection to it. Now that's repeated exposure over and over. You become a newer to it. And then eventually what happens? You're like cleaning the house. You're sweeping out the garage and you start singing this stupid inane song that you hate. And you're like, oh my God. And so it just becomes a part of you. And so a lot of scammers start by priming you. And the way you get primed for something is you can maybe see some spam in your email about it. Maybe you go to the mailbox and you open up the mail and you know, you are trying to pinch pennies. You want to save and invest for the future. So what do you do? You immediately reach for the Val pack and soar through the coupons, right? You, I mean, you know, you're laughing at me, Michael, but I know you know what I mean. So you like, but so you flip through them, right? And you're like, oh, okay, you know, well, I don't have a dog, so I don't need a, a pet shampooing place. And oh, here's this meat packing company. I don't need that. And oh, I don't need my kitchen remodeled. <laughs> so, so I throw that one out too. And I just keep going and I keep going and I pick out the ones that I want. And then like four or five days later, you get a knock on your door and lo and behold, it's a contractor and he's telling you, Hey, I'm in the area. We're doing kitchen remodels. And like somewhere you've been primed for it. He says, I'm with ABC, you know, um, uh, contracting and we're doing kitchens. And, you know, like you think, okay, well, this guy must be reputable. If he's in the area, he's probably working for somebody else. And uh, like, I've heard of that company somewhere. Okay. So, so you're like, you're not sure where, but you know, you've heard of that company. And it's because you were primed with this little slip of paper. So the guy says, he's going to do it. You go on vacation expecting your kitchen to be done. And it's not done when you get back. And maybe half your furniture is missing too. Who knows? So uh, anyway, um, that's just, uh, I'm just uh, teasing my producer here, Michael, because he just had a kitchen experience that he's less than happy about. But that's an example of it. And there are scientific evidence to to back this up because they did a study and they primed these people with just a, a list of names. And so all these people, they've got names on this list, you know, Fred Finkelstein, John Jones, whatever, just a bunch of lists of them. And then two days later, They brought these people in and then they were given this list of names and they said, pick out the names of the celebrities on this list. And what happened? 
80% of the time, the names that they saw the other day, they just don't know, they don't make the connection to where they saw it from. But as they're picking these celebrities off, they picked those names too. And it's because they were primed for it. Because what makes a celebrity? How do we know somebody's famous? Because we saw them on TV, because, because we heard somebody talk about them, we heard their, you know, um, song on the radio, we watched them in a film. Like, how do we know when someone's a sub- celebrity? You know, and so sometimes to be able to say, oh, the way I know that, you know, Bob Brown is a celebrity is because I saw him in three movies. But in this instance, we didn't care what kind of a celebrity he was. We weren't asking you how you knew he was a celebrity. We just asked, you know, you know, pick out all the celebrities on the list. So that priming feature is used in marketing all the time. And scammers know this. And so that's how they can get to your wallet because they prime you. So your guard is down. You don't know why you know where they are from. But you just know that you heard them somewhere. And so it's it's how people like Bernie Madoff took advantage of people. Um, because now, here's another area. Instead of priming, we also had people's guard down. Why? Because it was a friend of theirs. So it didn't occur to them that they should probably go research this person. And if it was a kitchen contractor, perhaps I should go to the registrar of contractors uh, on the Internet or call my local um, uh, city government or municipality and ask them, hey, I'm thinking about using ABC contracting. What kind of complaints have you gotten about them? And they'll tell you every single one. Now, I'm not a big proponent proponent of some of these for-profit entities that are that call themselves you know bureaus i don't want to name anybody in particular but they refer to themselves as as industry watchdogs but you pay to be a part of that you pay to be a member of it and so how how accountable is that? I think that the government that doesn't have a vested interest in anybody because they're not getting anything but like a $20 licensing fee off of the person. So we're not talking making or breaking, you know, the city budgets that 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 is a more reputable source or nonprofit organizations that independently rank and don't accept advertising. So those are resources that you can go to to find out about people's reputation. You know, um, with, with, when it's in a friend's situation, you know, you look at them, you're like, oh, well, you drive a great car and you live in a fabulous house. And so, gosh, um, you probably know what you're doing with money. So here, okay, I'll give you my money so you can invest. And then it becomes a situation, you know, Bernie Madoff preyed on the members of the congregation at his synagogue. You know, he relied on his Jewish faith and he manipulated other Jewish people out of their money. And then friends of those Jewish people saw all of this money that they were making and the great lifestyles that they were living in. So they just kept jumping off the cliff like lemmings. And before you know it, they're out of their money. And, you know, the house of cards eventually fell. So priming is one way that you can be aware of a scam about to be perpetrated on you. Uh, a friend trying to conjole you into um, a an investment under the auspices that you guys are friends and that there's no need for you to take the time to research it. And a third way that you can detect a scam is limited time off or too good to be true. You're the last one I'm telling this to. So um, if not, you know, like the offer's closed because I've already got enough money, so I really don't need yours. But because I like you and I think you're a nice person and I want to help you out, I'll let you in. Right? Sure. So... So uh, those are ways that you can prepare yourself to detect a scam because they're more subtle than the overt ways. And again, um, I have about three trillion. How, how many? Well, maybe, maybe was it four trillion? I can't remember how much, but I got all this money that's uh, in uh, South Africa. If you just want to, um, and and uh, oh, I also have some in Tanzania too. So, um, and I need to get it out of the country fast because we've got turmoil in the government. So, if uh, if you just wire me six hundred and seventy two dollars to cover the wire fee, then hey, I'll split it with you because I'm ready to leave the country. Is that cool? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, I thought you'd be good for that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so if you would like more resources on how to detect a scam and sign up for our scam and fraud alerts, just visit the website at unlockyourwealthradio.com for more up-to-date scam alert information to protect you and your family from loss. Now, we have so much more in store because we've got Christopher Dukes. We've got our moolah word of the day and Lauren Rumpler and Keys to Riches. That's all coming up. On Unlock Your Wealth Radio, stay tuned for more right after this. Commander Marty Logan here from the Top Gun Seminars. What I've learned over the years is that the most successful people in life have coaches to guide them along their chosen path. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Tony Stewart, Tom Hopkins, Kathy Colby all had coaches. Whether it was their father, someone else's father, or another person who helped them to shape their desires into an achievable path to success with a system of accountability where quitting was the only way to fail. Each of these people had someone who didn't see them as they first were, but as the person inside they knew they could easily become. Financial coaching can be the single addition you need to become financially independent. Call the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation now for your free consultation. 1-866-966-9420. That toll-free number again is 1-866-966-9420. Or visit us on the web at www.unlockyourwealth.com. I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Too much month left over at the end of the money? Tired of paying off debt again like a slave? Then tune in to my one-minute update on Fort Myers Beach Radio for your morning cup of money motivation. And for more tips, visit crackingyourmoneycode.com. Looking to take your game to the next level? Maybe you're restless and not sure what to do next in your life? If networking to elevate yourself, looking for inspiration, or being somewhere in between relaxing and making it happen, then the Women of Change Cruise is for you. Join a team of elite women who will take your game to the next level or help you find your game while surrounding yourself with welcoming, accepting women who will affirm, motivate, and inspire you to live your best life starting now. Space is limited. Surf over now and be a part of women just like you who refuse to settle for less and are looking to get more out of this lifetime. The Women of Change Phenomenon. Leave your own mark on the world. For more information about the Women of Change cruise and upcoming events, please visit our website at womenofchange.org. Greenback is your neighborhood lender for auto title loans. We offer fast and easy cash title loans for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Keep your car with title loans from $100 to $50,000. There are no year or mileage limits at Greenback. And we offer the cheapest rates in Arizona, guaranteed. For more information, visit GreenbackTitleLoans.com or call 480-926-6666. Welcome back to the show, everyone. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio, and I am she, your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagon Halls. And it's time for the moolah word of the day. And I mentioned stationery and stuff. Uh, but not the stationary, like write a love letter to your sweetheart and send it with perfume kind of stationary. No, I meant like not moving as in fixed. Our moolah word of the day, or since it is two words, our moolah phrase of the day is fixed asset. And the definition of a f- fixed asset is a long term tangible asset held for business use and not expected to be converted to cash in the current or upcoming fiscal year, such as manufacturing equipment, real estate, and furniture. It's also called plant. Okay. And so if you think about fixed assets, these are things that help you do your business. Like in the form of real estate, it might be your manufacturing facility or your retail space that you built out and you own the dirt and and the real estate. So that would be a fixed asset versus one that you could liquidate uh, within a year, something that you could sell like a bond or some sort of other obligation, a certificate of deposit, something that can be converted to cash rather quickly. So those are fixed assets and they help you serve your business. So think about from in terms of you being president of Me Inc. And as president of Me Inc., you function and operate. And so think of all of the stuff that you have that you wouldn't necessarily liquidate, but help you be you. And that is what a fixed asset is on the personal level. 
show. Uh, for more moolah word of the days, all you have to do is visit our website at unlockyourwealthradio.com. And I am so excited because now we are going to be into the salacious part of our financial show. And that would be talking about money, lies, secrets, all of those things that kind of tear a marriage apart. And to help me with this conversation, Christopher Dukes is joining me. And he is the president and CEO of Dukes Wealth Management. He supervises over 500 clients across Los Angeles and Ventura counties. He specializes in alternative investments and income strategies. And he lives in Newberry Park, California with his wife and two children. And he is now joining us on our program. Let's meet Christopher. Welcome to the show, Christopher. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm thrilled to have you on because one of the hot topics lately that I seem to be writing about and speaking about is financial infidelity. And you have your own take on money secrets and marriage and and what can happen when we start being silly or secretive when it comes to money. So you're a wealth manager. So you see things at probably, you know, the 50,000 foot altitude level compared to uh, what other people may typically go through. What kind of financial challenges do you see going on between husbands and wives? Yeah, it's it's such a, a huge area right now, and, and thank you so much for uh, you know for for discussing this topic today because I I think it's something that's uh, you know extremely important. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, I can help you make money. That that's not a problem, uh, but it's what you do with it and, and how you utilize it that you know that it's really important here. And you know, one of the biggest things, and you know, you hit it on the head in, in, in your intro there was you know talking about you know financial fidelity or infidelity and. You know, there was a big survey that came out last year that said that uh, 76% of Americans find financial infidelity worse than sexual infidelity. So, you know, cheating on someone with money, you know, 76% of the United States thinks is worse than cheating on them, you know, in a physical relationship. And, you know, when I saw that and heard that, I said, man, I have to, you know, research this. And and I had sort of known that for years and in interviewing, you know, my, my, uh, my top 30 households that are you know, a million plus and sort of talking to them and, and, and seeing how they feel about money and, and interviewing them, you know, when we would do client reviews, et cetera. Uh, and, and the one big thing I found is is probably the most challenging is, is finding a time or a place to talk about money. Uh, you know, it, when you've got a lot of it, uh, it, it's interesting because people kind of say they put it on the back burner, but you really have to, you know, schedule a time you know, to talk with your spouse or even, you know, if it's, if you're not married, if it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, you know, uh, matter, talk about money. Um, you know, I tell my clients, listen, schedule it like you would schedule, you know, a regular, you know, meeting or a date. Like when you go to the doctor or you're going to you know, your CPA, whatever, you need to schedule a time to sit down and talk about, you know, money and, and just simple things like, uh, you know, limits, you know, that's, that's a big one. You know, how much, can I spend or how much do I spend without letting you know, right? I mean, what makes sense? And for some couples, you know, like my wife and I, for example, we have what's called the $100 rule. You know, if either of us is going to go out and spend 100 bucks, we give each other a call or a text and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm over here. I'm at, you know, Home Goods and I want to get a couple lamps and, uh, you know, it's about uh, 250 bucks. Are you good with that? And, you know, what I found is that when that happens, you know, when I have the ability to, you know, to talk to my wife and, and I tell clients this all the time, it really stops any sort of, uh, you know, fights that I think would happen in the future. And, and honestly, whatever you decide on, just be sure you stick to it. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of people can think of better ways to spend their time, but, you know, your marriage and or your relationship is going to be a lot stronger if you can, you know, to make these rules and stick to them. Yeah, I don't know that it's necessarily about the dollar amount. I think you got it right. It's about the common courtesy and involving them in the decision. And then if they do give your ble- their blessing, then their hand is still in the cookie jar with yours. They can't come back <laughs> on you later. So what you spent $250 on that ugly, heinous lamp. Right, yeah, you're saying- exactly right. Well, I mean, listen, and then you're exactly, you know, you hit it on the head and that is, you know, for some people it's $25. You know, you go spend two more than 25 and for some of my other high net worth clients, you know, they don't, they don't worry about anything, you know, less than a thousand. If you go over a grand, they got to start talking. I wish I had that problem, but Hey, you know, we can, uh, <laughs> we can all aspire. 
Um, but yes. yeah, I agree. Once you once you have the uh, you know the, the wherewithal and the respect, I think more so, it's uh, you're gonna have a better time. Yeah, I I, I believe I, I I fully believe that. I mean, I've seen that in my you know when I was a financial advisor, and I see that all the time in my coaching practice. It's just you know it's about common courtesy. It's not about money because people feel like they're being controlled. Oh well, I shouldn't have to do this, and I'm like, well, it's not that it, it has nothing to do with being controlled or the amount of money. You know, I think one of the biggest misconceptions, and you probably see this all the time, especially when you grow wealth because you're the the guy that they come to to take their their whatever they have to the next level. And people have a misunderstanding that, you know, when you have more money, you don't have problems. You don't have, you know, it's not that you don't have problems. You just have different problems or or problems on a larger scale. Right, and I, you know, I, I've seen a couple of things. That it, it's uh, it's interesting you bring it up because I had a, a situation that I, I had written about this at length for a, a couple of articles, but uh, had a client who, uh, you know, was one of these guys who, after you know each argument, for example, he, he was having kind of the controlling personality that your your, your control word sort of brought up this story, and when he would argue with his spouse, you know, he would eventually go out and buy some type of bling, right? Hoping to, they would approve their marriage because he, you know, he's trying to control them. He's like, you know what? We had this argument. I want to buy you some bling to make up for it. But what happened, what, it was the opposite effect because she started realizing, hey, every time I argue with this guy, I get some jewelry. <laughs> so next thing you know, every, every time, you know, there's even a little bit of a, you know, misunderstanding, she blows it up because she knows he's going to come back that night with, you know, some bling. So it ended up being, you know, more of a bigger source of conflict for them. Like you said, you know, more money, more problems, uh, because they were a little bit more wealthy, but it ended up, you know, giving their, <laughs> their eventual divorce, uh, a lot more, uh, a lot more pull because he was thinking, gosh, I bought you all this stuff. And she said, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He conditioned the response. I mean, correct. You know, and, uh, and and it's so it's so funny how you know we get hung up in ourselves and we think that we're doing the right thing and 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 we don't we consider the moment and we don't consider the outcome or the rewards or repercussions of that particular activity and and we get all hung up and stuff. Well, I am just so excited about our conversation. I have so many more questions for you. Uh, And after the break, I want to talk about money experiences and, and coming together before you're married. And what are some of those questions you mentioned about talking about setting it like an appointment? You are listening to Christopher Dukes on Unlock Your Wealth Radio. And we'll be right back with more coming up after this. Commander Marty Logan here from the Top Gun Seminars. What I've learned over the years is that the most successful people in life have coaches to guide them along their chosen path. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Tony Stewart, Tom Hopkins, Kathy Colby all had coaches. Whether it was their father, someone else's father, or another person who helped them to shape their desires into an achievable path to success with a system of accountability where quitting was the only way to fail. Each of these people had someone who didn't see them as they first were, but as the person inside they knew they could easily become. Financial coaching can be the single addition you need to become financially independent. Call the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation now for your free consultation. 1-866-966-9420. That toll-free number again is 1-866-966-9420. Or visit us on the web at www.unlockyourwealth.com. I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Too much month left over at the end of the money? Tired of paying off debt again like a slave? Then tune in to my one-minute update on Fort Myers Beach Radio for your morning cup of money motivation. And for more tips, visit crackingyourmoneycode.com. Looking to take your game to the next level? Maybe you're restless and not sure what to do next in your life? If networking to elevate yourself, looking for inspiration, or being somewhere in between relaxing and making it happen, then the Women of Change Cruise is for you. Join a team of elite women who will take your game to the next level or help you find your game while surrounding yourself with welcoming, accepting women who will affirm, motivate, and inspire you to live your best life starting now. Space is limited. Surf over now and be a part of women just like you who refuse to settle for less and are looking to get more out of this lifetime. The Women of Change Phenomenon. Leave your own mark on the world. For more information about the Women of Change cruise and upcoming events, please visit our website at womenofchange.org. Greenback is your neighborhood lender for auto title loans. 
we offer fast and easy cash title loans for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Keep your car with title loans from $100 to $50,000. There are no year or mileage limits at Greenback. And we offer the cheapest rates in Arizona, guaranteed. For more information, visit GreenbackTitleLoans.com or call 480-926-6666. Welcome back to the show, everyone. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio. I am she, your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagon Halls, and I have Christopher Dukes on with me today. And we were talking about money, secrets, marriage, financial infidelity, all of that good stuff that nobody wants to talk about. We'd rather talk about sex than talk about our money. Isn't that the truth, Christopher? <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Makes for a little more scintillating conversation sometimes, but I would argue that the cash conversation is equally as scintillating. Oh, I know. Isn't it so funny? You know, it, you just make me think of that one TV show that they have about some of the crazy wills of famous people. I can't think of the name of the show, but... Um, oh, it, yeah, they had, uh, like, Sinatra's will on there, and they had... Um, uh, yeah, I know exactly when you're talking about it. I think it's on A&E or on History Channel. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I just... Uh, it's it's crazy, you know, um, uh, what people do or don't do when it comes to their money when you think that they have all of this money and some great financial advisors... You know, um, but what if I'm not married, but I'm thinking about it and I am, you know, a high profile, uh, up and coming woman, a professional woman, and I'm doing very well for myself and I meet this guy and like, I can't quite tell, you know, I mean, I'm really head over heels for him, but I don't know where he is financially and like, I want to know, cause I don't want to get burned. I got burnt once before. And so I don't want to get burned again. So what, so how do I start a conversation about that? You mentioned before, you know, when you're married, you make an appointment to, to have a conversation, but how do you handle it when you're dating? Yeah, it's, it's such a tough question. And there, you know, there really is, uh, there's no, you know, sort of concrete answer where I can say, Hey, you know, A is B and B is C and C is all done. Uh, <laughs> But when you look at it, you know, what it comes down to initially, and I'll use your, your, your topic or your example there, which is, hey, I'm head over heels. Uh, and, you know, in a relationship, you know, and I know that the, what it comes down to is one word, and it's trust. You know, do, mm-hmm. do I trust this person? You know, obviously emotionally, you know, if you're in love with someone, whether you're married or not, and the piece of paper means nothing because your, your emotions are, are tied in. So yeah, you, know, you got all those hormones oh. raging, you know. <laughs> exactly. So then you go, well, okay, do I trust this person? So I got my hormones there in check. Now I got to look at, you know, the mental side of it. So when you look at this and you see what, what's right for this relationship, well, it depends on the personalities involved. So, you know, for example, you know, you, you'd be talking to your, your, uh, your, your up and coming person here, your, your person that uh, you may want to spend the rest of your life with. And, and uh, let's just say you're cohabitating, for example. You guys say, well, we're, let's live together for a while to see if we, you know, can, can stand being married. And you look up and you say, huh, you know, I get up every morning and check my bank account online, you know, to see what checks have cleared, make sure I didn't have any, you know, fraud or anything like that. But my significant other, you know, barely checks a statement you know, once a month, there's a problem. You know, you are someone that's more, you know, sort of checking things out, making sure that you've got enough money in there, whereas your significant other is more sort of blase about it. Well, you know, I'll, I'll look at it on the statement, you know, or, or the other, other side of it is if all you care is that there's enough money in the account, you know, for lunch at McDonald's, then, you know, and then the, the, your you know, significant other, you know, wants to make sure there's 5,000 extra dollars for, you know, emergencies then, you know, you have to talk about whether, like, a joint account, you know, is going to work for you. Because, you know, emotionally, if you're there, then we look at, okay, what financially is the first step? And, of course, it's always, you know, a joint account, opening this, you know, account together to establish trust, to establish this sort of togetherness with each other. But there's no right answer here. I mean, it depends on, you know, the, the specific personality. You know, one of the things that I see has gotten couples into probably the most trouble uh, is, uh, is secrets. You know, this, this article I wrote, this is secrets about, you know, money, marriage and uh, sex. 
and it, it talks about you know secrets being the you know the, the sort of now that we're right near Halloween that the haunting thing that's going to you know come back to, to bite you. And you know we all know that you know that the most stressful type of uh, of uh, money is debt, right? You know if I owe people things, if I owe you know college loans or whatever it is. Uh, specifically, you know, high interest, hard to pay off debt, credit cards, etc. And I've counseled people in relationships that, you know, they were just head over heels, like you said, with this with this person and just love them and then come to find out that the person had, you know, seven credit cards that were all jacked up, that were, you know, crazy high interest, you know, at the, the limits that it had late payments. They were at that 29.99%, you know, interest rate. And my client said, well, you know, if I get married to that person, you know, whether I know about it or not, don't I become liable for that repayment? And the answer is yes, you know, you do. So, you know, in a relationship, you know, the other thing you have to get around is, you know, secrets. And, and some people have, especially people with money, there's certain things that they don't want to divulge right away about, you know, saving, about assets. And I get that, right? You know, I, if, if you and I are dating, I don't need to know that you've got $10 million in checking. You know, if you tell me you got a million, I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> yeah. But, but well, you want you know, me to, I want you to like me for me and not for my money. And you always got that like gnawing in the back of your head if you don't know if the other person has money or you clearly know they don't and you want them to like you for you. I mean, that can be, you know, an issue, you know. And and I think that savings, you know, is not so much as important to me as the obligations to others. I think that that's more damaging. You know, I mean, wouldn't it be great if you thought somebody only had like, you know, their 401k had 100 grand and then it turns out that they got like 5 million in a trust somewhere just hidden, <laughs> you know, so that's like bonus. But, the the you know. But if, if, you know, you and I get together and I know you have like a hundred grand in, in your, you know, 401k, but then I find out that you screwed somebody over on some Ponzi scheme, you know, 10 years ago. And now all of a sudden, you know, our entire estate and all of our joint assets are being sued for like 50 million bucks. Now I got a problem. Right. Well, and I had, uh, I just had one of these happen with a couple that, uh, was uh, one of my younger couples in their 20s and, you know, getting together and deciding, you know, they weren't married yet, but they were already starting to join accounts. And one of the things that they were joining together was a uh, college loan, you know, these Nelnet, whatever these loans are. And uh, the uh, the wife, uh, the future wife, had about, you know, $800 in less. I mean, she was literally almost paid off of this, you know, this rather large college loan. But they were doing one of these things where you can join the money, you know, you do the uh, the joint accounts and you get a better deal. And so she's on the phone and she's, you know, they sell the paperwork in and the guy on the phone starts laughing. And, he, and this is, again, this is the customer service guy. And he says, wow, you, you must love this this man. And she kind of laughed and she said, well, why do you say that? She, he said, well, he goes, because you are combining these two accounts, which is going to make you liable for the whole amount. She said, well, yeah, I, I owe $800. What's he owe? And the customer service guy said fifty two thousand. No, oh my gosh! <laughs> and this was one of those debt secrets that I, uh, you know, when she called me, and she was, she just was, just flabbergasted. She said, "Christopher, what do I do?" She said, "He never told." She said, "He had some debt." And I said, "Yeah, you need to quantify that word. Some is such a broad. It's kind of like saying, you know, I'm nice. What does that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have right? a mean streak. Yeah, what does yeah. that mean?" Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm just, so you that know, was, that was a thing I'm a serial killer. Really hurt it. Yeah. And, and so, you know, so, you know, it's, we wonder about being, you know, gauche or inappropriate. So when, when is a good time to, to bring up this conversation before I get super fall in love? And then I've got so many hormones and chemicals raging through me that I'm just going to dismiss it or trivialize it or reduce because my logic brain isn't firing. Cause I'm so swimming in oxytocin that all I can do is just smile and just swoon every time you walk in the room. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the way, one of the ways to do it and what I suggest to people all the time is, you know, it, not to talk about the actual, you know, sort of assets you have, but just to set financial responsibility, you know, saying, you know, in this relationship, you know, we're living together, we know we're going to be married, my, my oxytocin is flowing, but let's just, you know, let's figure out who's going to do what. And, you know, in a you know, stereotypical relationship, you know, years and years past, you know, the, the women would manage the day-to-day -day finances and the men would deal with the investments in the planet. Well, that, you know, the tradition is, is, is out the window. It's, it's, it's not apply anymore. But the best option is this. Recognize who's better 
hit the individual job and split up the financial path. I mean, you know, if you're more of the, you know, you're into the minutia and you need to take care of, you know, these types of things, then, you know, you should be the one that's looking at the portfolio every day. If your spouse or future spouse is more, oh, hey, I'll, I'll call into customer service from the bank account, then maybe we let them, you know, just write the checks once a month for bills, right? They're remembering things certain times that you're the one that's a little bit more hands-on. You know, listen, money can be enjoyable, but you have to enjoy it, you know, with someone. I mean, having a bunch of money in the bank means nothing to me if I don't go out and, you know, and, and have experiences, have experience with someone. But you have to make sure that you trust that person and make sure that person has the good money as you are so that uh, you've got the satisfying relationship. So do we even approach the past or do we let sleeping dogs lie if we create this responsibility and agreement moving forward? Well, I think that, you know, you let sleeping dogs lie, you know, to an extent, and that's where it becomes legal. You know, you would have to find out, obviously, for your personal protection, if there's anything, you know, any liens pending, any lawsuits, anything that would be, that could hurt you, you know, personally, financially, by you putting your name on a piece of paper with this person. But if it's something where they've had issues in the past, you know, you need to find out that. So the assets, like I said, those, you know, those, when someone's comfortable with you, they're going to divulge that. But specifically debts, you know, how much does somebody owe? Do they have, a, you know, a, a refi that went bad? Do they owe money on it? Do they have a foreclosure? Do they, do they walk away from a house? You know, something that these people could come back on them, and now here you are on paper with them, and now they're coming after you. You know, you need to find out what debts there are. So at the end of the day, the secrets about debts are the ones that will get you in trouble. Assets you can build together in the future, and hopefully, you know, your assets uh, together will grow so you can use them on you know, cool stuff like vacations and concerts and, you know, things that uh, give you a quality of life. Yay. Well, this has been an amazing conversation, Christopher. If folks want to get a hold of you for some more great advice or to have you become their wealth manager, where do folks find you? Sure. Uh, a couple of ways. Uh, you can uh, contact us uh, to the main office. Uh, our toll-free number is one eight seven seven ninety nine dukes I actually got the last name in there. I was so happy. Uh, How cool. Well, one eight seven seven ninety nine Dukes, uh, or you can go to our website, which is Dukes Financial. It's all one word: d u k e s Financial dot com. Uh, and on the main page there, all of our phone numbers are listed, as well as my personal email. You can always shoot me an email, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm a, a no fee advisor. I could certainly uh, help anyone out that uh, that needs it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being our part of our program today. And for those of you who are driving around without a pencil, never fear. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com is here. All you have to do is visit Christopher's show page at UnlockYourWealthRadio.com and you'll get all the linky links to his good stuff. Stay tuned. We have so much more in store for you. Keys to Riches coming up right after this. You're listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio. We'll see you shortly. Commander Marty Logan here from the Top Gun Seminars. What I've learned over the years is that the most successful people in life have coaches to guide them along their chosen path. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Tony Stewart, Tom Hopkins, Kathy Colby all had coaches. Whether it was their father, someone else's father, or another person who helped them to shape their desires into an achievable path to success with a system of accountability where quitting was the only way to fail. Each of these people had someone who didn't see them as they first were, but as the person inside, they knew what they could easily become. Financial coaching can be the single addition you need to become financially independent. Call the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation now for your free consultation. 1-866-966-9420. That toll-free number again is 1-866-966-9420. Or visit us on the web at www.unlockyourwealth.com. I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Too much month left over at the end of the money? Tired of paying off debt again like a slave? Then tune in to my one-minute update on Fort Myers Beach Radio for your morning cup of money motivation. And for more tips, visit crackingyourmoneycode.com. Looking to take your game to the next level? Maybe you're restless and not sure what to do next in your life? If networking to elevate yourself, looking for inspiration, or being somewhere in between relaxing and making it happen, then the Women of Change Cruise is for you. Join a team of elite women who will take your game to the next level or help you find your game while surrounding yourself with welcoming, accepting women who will affirm, motivate, and inspire you to live your best life starting now. Space is limited. Surf over now and be a part of women just like you who refuse to settle for less and are looking to get more out of this lifetime. The Women of Change Phenomenon. 
Leave your own mark on the world. For more information about the Women of Change cruise and upcoming events, please visit our website at womenofchange.org. Greenback is your neighborhood lender for auto title loans. We offer fast and easy cash title loans for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Keep your car with title loans from $100 to $50,000. There are no year or mileage limits at Greenback. And we offer the cheapest rates in Arizona, guaranteed. For more information, visit GreenbackTitleLoans.com or call 480-926-6666. Welcome back to the show, everyone. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio, and I am she, your purveyor of prosperity, how the wagon hauls. And we, it's that time, you know, keys to riches, everybody's favorite time, although the show is our whole favorite time. But specifically, we're going to learn about money management. And before we do, we are going to check in with our Unlock Your Wealth Radio protege, Lauren Rumpler, and see how her process is going for her with the keys to riches. Welcome to the show, Lauren. Thanks for having me on, Heather. I am so glad to check in with you. I'm sorry we missed you uh, last week, but uh, I am all excited that you are in studio and starting to record on your music project. So how has it been going since we started with our acceptance and affirmation key? So you came to terms with the fact that you're just starting out and yes. you don't know much about money and you want to get off on the right track. Yes, absolutely. And, and then, so I've been working on my affirmations to try and fix that. Awesome. So would you like to share a couple with us? Absolutely. I would love to. Um, my first affirmation is I use my credit card responsibly. Ooh, that's a good one. My, the, that is a good one. I'm just really excited about it. Yeah, for um, someone your age I, to say that, I'm surprised. So I'm really impressed now. I am worthy of wealth is my second one. Now that's a good one. That's a good one. And how does that um, how does that relate to how you've thought about money in the past? Well, it definitely plays into my objectivist philosophy. Um, in objectivist philosophy, uh, objectivists believe that they are worthy of making wealth because they believe that everybody is able to gather value in the form of wealth. So it's a very important affirmation for me personally. Yes, and for all of us objectivists, actually. Um, We are entitled to what we have created and to be able to exchange our value for value, just like Hank Reardon testifies in Atlas. And so that's an awesome one, and that's one that so many people struggle with. So... Uh, that's very impressive um, that you were able to come up with that because, you know, uh, we've been told, you know, to share or there's never enough to go around sometimes, you know, um, and people um, make you feel guilty if you have had money or if you came from money. And so you try not to show it or be proud of it because you're looking to be accepted by others. And so so worth is a huge part. I'm really impressed that you chose that one. Um, Do you have another affirmation? Yes, I do. Uh, My third affirmation is my talent and ability can make me money. That's a great one. And that's that plays into you making money with your voice, being able to sing on these albums and movie soundtracks and all kinds of stuff like that. So, um, yes, Yes, it does, Heather. (laughs) Have you ever felt discouraged, you know, in your musical career pursuit? Is that adding a level of comfort or helping you work on that piece of it? Oh, absolutely. The odds are not exactly in my favor. But if I keep a positive mindset, I believe that I've got a much better opportunity. That's really awesome. That's a great place to be. Now, this week's key is about goal achievement, dreams with deadlines. Now, when we talk about dreams with deadlines and when we get into this key further this week, you'll understand there's a difference between goal setting and goal achievement. And that's what sets apart what we do with our goal strategy is that we make it impossible to fail. And I, and I was inspired by my father's plan your work, work your plan 
kind of mentality. And if you make the plan in such a way that you know what the expectations are, you're always able to achieve your goals if you just do the work. So let's talk a little bit about how you have set goals in the past or are currently setting goals. How do you get, how do you decide you want to chase a goal? Well, uh, normally I decide I want to chase a goal by making a strategic plan because I have a background in public relations. So it's the easiest way for me personally to decide to make a goal. Okay. So you have this goal in mind. And what's what's the next step? How do you take it from being a dream to a goal and then your reality? Date setting is definitely the most helpful tool that you can create. And it's important to have certain defining dates up until the completion date so that you know you're making good progress. Okay. And what happens if you blow one of those dates? Well, you try not to beat yourself up too much, and you set another date, um, which you expect to get it done. Okay. Now, when you talk about long-term goals, and we're talking about goals that are a year or more out, how do you go about creating a plan for that? Well, um, Actually, my album is a good example of that. I have dates for all of the 12 songs that, or um, excuse me, 11 songs that I still have to write for the album and when I expect to have each of them done by. And that's all leading up to my July 4th, 2014 date of my album release. Awesome. So as we think about goal setting and goal achievement, you know, that's a long way off. So how do you stay engaged when there's so many things that you could be doing? You could be going to parties and running around with people. I mean, especially at your age, you know, there's so many things to do to distract us when we're in our 20s. How do you stay engaged? Oh, um, well, the big thing is Ayn Rand talks about uh, value judgment and her philosophy and how important a value judgment is. So for me, having a singing career has been something that I've wanted to do since I was about five years old. So it's so important to me to sit down and put time aside every evening to work on my music. Uh, And that time is concrete. I do not change that time no matter what comes up. Okay. Yes, and I remember abutting against one of those times when I wanted to work with you for... (laughs) The Unlock Your Wealth stuff we were working on, and you're like, no, I can't because I've got to write this song. You know, you're fairly disciplined. What happens um, when you don't get a goal? Uh, Well, uh, I'm pretty hard on myself about my goals. Um, I was... I was raised that way, actually. My parents have always expected me to do exactly what it is that I say that I'm going to do. So luckily, that has been ingrained in me throughout my childhood. So I did have an advantage in that way. Mm -hmm. Now, were you ever punished for non-performance? No, I wouldn't say that I was punished for non-performance. I was a swimmer growing up. And my parents always expected me to do my best in the races and always um, improve my time in every race. Um, It wasn't about winning or losing. It was about always improving. And so my parents always set the standard that as long as they saw improvement, then um, they saw it as me achieving a goal and being successful. Okay. So is is there anything that you are afraid of or concerned about when it comes to strategizing for the future? Oh, absolutely. Um, Having graduated from Ball State University, I am in loan debt, of course, um, because it's impossible to go to college and not take out loans. So um, that's absolutely terrifying for somebody of my age still trying to break into my line of work, um, which is politics. Um, 
And so, yes, that's absolutely daunting. Yes, I can imagine. Um, I, I, I couldn't imagine having that as inescapable amount of debt that some um, kids take on these days just to um, go to school. Well, hopefully we can dispel some of that fear and give you some confidence by the way we perform our dreams with deadlines key. And we'll talk about how to get from here to where you want to go and make it almost like it's a foregone conclusion. Thanks so much for your time today. And let's get into this week's key, shall we? Take emotion out of the picture is this week's key in our Keys to Riches financial wellness series. If this is your first exposure to the keys, well, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to our broadcast. The Keys to Riches is a baker's dozen of financial concepts that teach you how to think like the rich and be in control of your own money. It also gives you specific techniques to create or fix your credit, eliminate debt, save and invest, building wealth while transforming your current financial habits into healthy money management skills. And we do that one week at a time, one key at a time. And this is our fifth key. So you are not too far into this season where you can start going back on the website and listening to all of the previous shows for season 17. We've had awesome guests so far this season and you can get caught up fairly quickly. This is an important key even as a standalone if it's your first exposure to it because we already know to spend less and save more, don't we? Everybody who's not nodding your head up and down, nod your head up and down, okay? And so if we already know this, why do we have money problems? Why? Come on, Michael. I know you have an answer. Because we don't pay attention. We don't pay attention. Why do we don't pay attention? Because we don't feel like it. Why do we don't feel like it? Because maybe we're tired or we're sad or we're busy with like other things and we just can't be bothered. We are emotionally engaged in some way and that's what dictates what we do with our money. And this key is so important because first we're going to learn what we're doing and how we're doing it. And then we're going to learn how we can overcome this because it's essential to keep our passions in perspective when it comes to our our money management. We want to be excited, exuberant. We want to fly out of bed in the morning when that alarm clock goes off to go make money. But we want to be hesitant. We want to be reserved. We want to be contemplative and think through our expenditures. And the reason why I say it this way, it sounds like I'm telling you something that's obvious. But in reality, our behavior is subconscious. We are on autopilot most of the time. You would be probably surprised if I told you that 70% of our lives is spent in some form of trance. Now we know a third of it is already taken up with sleep, but we're also in a wakeful trance, in a state of daydreaming, wonderment, disillusion, love, whatever it might be. And all of that is driven by biological responses that we interpret with emotion and whether we're mad at somebody and we want to get them back. And so we just had a fight with our husband and so we want to go out and blow a bunch of money because it'll make us feel better. And the irony of the whole situation is what you were arguing about was how high the credit card bills are. Uh, but you're going to go out and do that same thing again. I, and I'm speaking from experience. I had a coaching client that would be calling me halfway to the mall complaining about her crummy husband. And she was just going to go get another handbag because it would make her feel better. But the reason why he was getting on her case was because she was blowing too much cash and he was struggling to try to make ends meet. But she couldn't connect it to. Once we figured out what it was is that's what she was taught. As a kid, because she would watch her parents fight about money, and as soon as her parents fought about money or anything, which she just saw fighting, mom would take her and her sister out to the the mall, and they would go shopping. Now, her parents were independently wealthy. How convenient. So even if mom did blow a ton of money, they could afford it. She, 
didn't associate that as a child that, oh, my parents are rich, therefore we can go do this. No, as a kid, you just take information as it is. What you see is all there is. So you see your mom making you try on stuff. Then there's a pile of this stuff on the counter and she pulls out a piece of plastic and then the lady gives you the bag of stuff and you go home. And that becomes the pattern. You do it over and over enough, it creates a neural pathway, and that's the pattern. When you fight with your spouse, you run to the mall. So it's on autopilot. What do we know about conscious, you know, um, or unconscious competence? When we get really, really good, we don't think about driving a car now. We just get in and go. And by the time we get done listening to the radio and chowing down a sandwich and slurping our, you know, triple macchiato, half calf, half decaf, you know, we're already at our destination. We didn't think about it at all. But the first time we drove, we were scared to death. We were busy. We're like, oh my gosh, highway hypnosis can't do it. So you're like constantly scanning all of the instrument paddle and your mirrors and then looking in the head and you're trying to do horizon driving, but you can't help it because you're looking right in front of you because you just saw a dead bird and you're like, oh my gosh. And all of these things. So, so we get from being, uh, consciously incompetent, like knowing we don't know how to drive to being unconsciously competent. We could do it effortlessly to, um, everything. So this whole shopping response to a argument with her, with your spouse becomes automatic. She was halfway to the mall before she thought to call me and talk about her spending issues. And all she could do was complain about her husband. And she was already in there and you could hear like the hangers going shk, 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 as she's flipping through looking for her size, still complaining about her husband. Like it was an automatic thing and we had to get ahead of that trigger we had but we had to identify where all of that came from and as we explored it we figured it out so we have to learn to take emotion out of the picture because we base our money decisions on emotion and then we justify with reason and logic after the fact you know you don't need a new car let alone one on payments if you've got a car that's working just fine you know and and it's not giving you any trouble and you don't have any payment Why would you go out and get one? But, oh, my gosh, there's this new car, Elon Musk. He's the savior of the universe with his electric car. And now we all have to have one. Well, they're like $70,000, okay, if you want one of these Teslas. And while it, like, seems, like, really cool, um, you know, what is it going to do for us? Well, it's going to give us prestige, okay, if we have it. So we'll look cool going down the road. Um, uh, we can brag to our friends that we're being earth conscious by reducing our carbon footprint with this car. Um, are we really saving money at the gas pump? Because, you know, we're picking it back up on our electric bill. So we don't even know if that's our real savings. Now we have a payment, you know, but, um, we can justify, you know, uh, all of these good things, uh, about why we should have this when our current car works just fine. And, and this is something that we do because of the way our brain is set up. You know, we always talk about this on the show. Survival, emote, decide. Okay. And so we survive, um, by fight, freeze, or flee. And, and if we don't get triggered there, then we move into our an emotional brain and we have a feeling about it. We create a memory about it and we store it for later. And if we get triggered here, if our emotions are too high in one direction or another, we get too happy or too sad or too angry, uh, or too upset. We start dumping hormone and then our decide factor gets taken off the table because we can't even get to logic Larry in our brain. And so then all of our blood rushes to our extremities. You know, all of these hormones start releasing and that dress that's 70% off in that red color that makes your hair look so good, you just get sucked in and you have to have it. And you've got, then you get like these addiction things that start going on. So the anticipation of buying the dress on sale starts to kick in. And so now you have all of this dope dopamine that's hitting your system and now we've got to get this and then we go get it and we get this great high and it's so awesome until the credit card bill comes and even though the dress was 70% off because it was some high fashion luxury brand it still cost us 700 bucks and we didn't have $70 for the dress so since all of this is going on 
what can we do? You're like, oh my gosh, I'm powerless. No, you're not because now that you know how your brain works, this is what we are going to do to correct the situation. We're going to correct and redirect. So as soon as we feel this rush of emotion, as soon as we detect the autopilot has kicked in, we must interrupt the pattern. And regain our physiology. Have you ever been in an argument with someone and 20 minutes later you think, oh my God, I got the zinger. I could have said that if I would have only said that. And uh, yeah, we all raise our hands for that one, Michael. And so, so the reason why it takes about that long for that cleverness to come kick in is because that's a logic cleverness thing. And it takes about 20 minutes if we don't get to run from the flee portion or punch somebody out from the fight portion to dispel all of that. So it takes about that long for us to burn off all that hormone and regain the blood flow that we need to the brain. So what we need to do is get the blood flow going back to the brain. All right. So as soon as we figure this out, we need to immediately cease what we're doing and we need to start breathing. We need to start getting oxygen and blood flow to the brain. So we could do that one of two ways. If we're sitting somewhere and unable to, like if we're driving, we just need to start inhaling and exhaling and breathing deeply so we can get circulation uh, moving and through the metabolic process start by increasing blood flow, we're going to increase the, the ability to burn that off faster. And then we want to immediately pick another activity that we can do right now while we're still waiting for this hormone dump to go away. So drink a glass of water, do jumping jacks, read something totally unrelated to what you're doing, check email, something that will get you out of the particular curve that you are cru- cruising down. Because you've got to stop the hormone dump so the breathing does that and you have to start redirecting the behavior because nothing occurs in the background and and, and nothing occurs in a vacuum and so if you don't replace what it was you were doing with something else you're just going to go right back to it have you ever had your dog like grab your leg and try to trip you as you're running down the hallway because they're still wanting to play and you're like all done and and you keep saying no 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 so they stop but the minute you start walking they grab your leg and try to pull you down to wrestle again and you're like no 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 it's because you haven't given them something else to do and so they're still fixated so you will still be fixated on getting this particular item or spending this money or participating in this product or service and so you've got to redirect so you got to tell the dog to stop no cut it out and then you have to give them something good to do like sit go get a toy lay down roll over and you want to distract them and give them something else to do so they're not fixated on what they were doing. And you have to do the same thing to yourself. You have to correct and redirect. So we stop the hormone or we stop the engagement. We start redirecting the blood flow. And then we engage ourselves in another activity. And then when we're completely outside of the situation, we're totally calm, we're relaxed. Maybe it's even later on that day or the next day. When we can revisit that situation, then we can take and look at it and identify what specifically got me moving in that direction. And then you can start creating alternative scenarios the minute that same emotion gets generated that triggers that behavior. And now you can reprogram your response to that trigger if you can get ahead of the trigger. And then once you do identify like three different alternatives, so you have more than one resource in case one of those doesn't work for what you're doing presently. And then you want to like mentally visualize yourself receiving this trigger you know, being in front of the stimulus, receiving the trigger, and then choosing this next response so you can mentally rehearse it just as if you would physically rehearse it. So it starts to prepare you and recondition you for success and not failure with your spending. So that is it for this week's key. Try to take, and if you are not currently engaged in a stressful financial moment right now, then you can take this opportunity to sit down and look at a most recent event that you were not happy with and explore it and create new alternatives that to this, this spending money and that will give you the intestinal fortitude the next time that you get exposed to a stimulus that triggers that particular emotion and you can get ahead of it.
So for this week's key statement, key affirmation, and key action item, please visit our website at unlockyourwealthradio.com and click on the This Week's Key tab. And for more in-depth interviews with money experts, strategies, and members-only tools to fix your credit, get out of debt, and have more money and happiness, do what other savvy listeners have and visit unlockyourwealthradio.com where you go to get your money mind right so your wealth and happiness will follow. For Unlock Your Wealth Radio, I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Now go out and unlock your wealth today. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com is produced by Heather Wagonhalls and the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com and its affiliates are copyrighted 2013 with all rights reserved. For more information on the Keys to Riches Financial Wellness Series, please visit our website at www.unlockyourwealth.com.